Hello, and welcome to another video tutorial by edumats.ca. My name is Tyler Osborne, and today I'm going to show you a few of the tricks that you can use with Safari. Alright, so I'm just moving into my Safari window right here. You'll notice that my Safari window is full screen. Uh, this is a feature of uh, Mac OS X Lion. If you have Snow Leopard, yours won't be full screen, and yours will look a little bit more like this. For Lion users, if you'd like to do what I just did, um, you'll notice that a lot of the Apple applications have this have these two arrows right here in the corner. If you just click them, it'll go full screen. And uh, that way you can use more of your viewable space. And if you're like me and you have a 13 inch laptop, uh, a little bit more space is always a good thing. All right, now getting directly to Safari. Uh, there are a lot of really cool features of Safari that I found that a lot of my colleagues aren't aware of. So I just wanted to share a few of them with you. Let's start with the address bar here at the top. If you accidentally delete one of those buttons and you don't know how to get it back, or let's say that you want to add a couple new buttons, it's really easy. Just pick a gray space between a button, right click, and go to Customize Toolbar. This menu right here will drop down, and this menu will drop down whether you're using uh, Snow Leopard or you're using Lion and it'll look very similar to this. So if you've just deleted a button, something that you can do is just drag the whole bar back up and let go as soon as you see the plus sign and it'll just automatically restore the default bar. Or if you're just looking for a certain button, um, let's say the print button or maybe the, the mail button, which will automatically put it in your mail or just the new tab button, there's all sorts of different buttons. If you're looking for just one of these buttons, you can just drag the individual button up Place it where you like it and uh, let it go, and it'll lay and uh, it'll move to where you want it. When you're done placing your buttons or replacing the buttons, uh, just press the done button and that's it. So another feature that you can use in snow in both the Snow Leopard and the Lion version of Safari is uh, the bookmarks bar. Now you do have bookmarks. If you go into bookmarks down here and you've added bookmarks, there's going to be a whole bunch of bookmarks just listed here, but they're really messy. I much prefer using the bar, that's why I don't have any bookmarks in my bookmarks tab. So how I add a bookmark is I find a page that I want to bookmark. Uh, why don't we Google something here. Um, science lesson. Oh, science fair projects, that sounds like a good thing to Google. Alright, and I'm going to do this, sciencefairprojects.org, that sounds promising. All right, let's say that this was something that I actually wanted to bookmark. So see this plus sign right here on the left-hand side of your address bar? If you just click it, it's going to add a bookmark. Now, you can actually choose where you're going to bookmark this to. So you can put it in the reading list, in your top sites. These are two things that we're going to talk about in a second. Or you can put it to the bookmarks bar. And as you can see, I have a lot of folders on my bookmark bar. Or you can put it in the book bookmarks menu. The bookmarks menu is... Oh, let me cancel this. This is the bookmarks menu. So if you want them to be listed right here, where I don't have any, that's where it's going to put it. But I want to put it on the address bar. So I'm going to, or sorry, the bookmarks bar. So I'm going to pick the bookmarks bar. I'm going to leave it as science fair projects. If I wanted to rename it, I could rename it, and I just press add. And you can see that it automatically puts it on the left-hand side. If I don't want it there, I can drag it. Let's say I want it right in the middle or all the way to the right, I can drag it there. If I wanted it to go inside one of these folders, unfortunately I can't do that right here from the bar, but I will show you where you can do that. If I don't want this bookmark anymore, I can just drag it right off, and if I let go, it disappears. But because I'm going to show you some more features, I'm going to add this again, because I need it there so that I can uh, show you how to move bookmarks around. There we go. If I, wanted to add, if I wanted to add it to a folder right away, I just choose a folder that's underneath the bookmarks bar menu. So if I wanted to put it in my science folder, there it is. I'm going to add that to the science folder, and it's now in my science folder for my bookmarks. So you go into my NIP scene, go down to science, and there it is, right there. All right, let's get into the bookmarks. So you have three uh, icons here on the left. This is the reading list. This is bookmarks, and this is uh, top sites. We're going to look at all three of these, but let's look at the bookmarks first. So this is where you actually manage your bookmarks, and as you can see, you can look at your history, your bookmarks menu, which is the menu that's up here, 
your address book even. Um, Bollinger is networking and uh, RSS feeds is a whole other subject that I'm not going to get into today. But this is my bookmarks bar right here. And if you actually click on the, the little triangles, it'll open up the folder and show you that everything that's inside each folder. So let's say I wanted to add or move this science fair bookmark that's on the top right of my screen and I want to move it inside to a, inside of one of my folders. I'm just going to pick it up right here and I'm going to move it into the Nipissing folder and let go. And now it's in the Nipissing folder. Notice how it disappeared on the right hand side. There's now the very last link down here. All right, let's say now that uh, this, pro this uh, particular project is over or maybe the link is no good anymore and you need to delete it. This is also where you delete your bookmarks. So I don't need this one because I have another copy of it. So I'm going to right click on it and choose in the menu, delete. And now it's no longer one of my bookmarks. So the bookmarks menu, which is on the top left hand side, right beside the reading list and right beside top sites and right underneath the back and forward buttons. So this bookmarks icon right there, this is where you manage all your bookmarks. Now let's take a look at, oh, if you click it again, it'll take you back to your website. Let's take a look at top sites. So top sites are the websites that you most frequently visit or websites that you have pinned um, because you intend to visit them um, very frequently. So I'm going to go to, let me just go back here, there we go. I'm going to go back to the science fair and let's say I'm going to visit this a lot in the next month and I want this website to be easily accessible. So I'm going to press the plus sign and I am going to, instead of putting it in science, I am going to move it all the way up to top sites, right there. I'm going to press add. Now when I go into the top sites button, it should be there. There it is, right there. Now, I want you to notice right here, this is the Global Mail's website, and you can see there's a little blue star in the corner of the Global Mail's website. That blue star means that that website has been updated since the last time that I visited it. So that is actually a really useful feature for you to be able to uh, just at a glance see which one of your favorite websites has new content for you to see. Now these sites automatically update to the ones that you visit the most often unless you pin them. So I just press the edit button right here in the bottom left corner and you can uh, see that it turns into done. And then you get this little X and you get this little uh, thumbtack. Um, thumbtack icon. Now down here I have Wikipedia and Google Maps and neither one of these have the blue thumbtack. That means they're not pinned. These are just websites that I have visited recently. So if I started visiting a different site more often than either of these two sites, these two sites would get bumped off the menu. If I have a website on here that I want to be permanent, always to be available, so for instance my Nipissing website, I just put a pin in it and then it'll always be there. If I no longer want a website to be on this list, I just press the X button. So that science one just disappeared. And then I press done and I can't edit it anymore. If you would like to search your history, this is also where you search your history visually. So you hit the history button and you give it a second to load. And then you can start clicking back and forth in between websites that you have visited recently. And this is a really quick way to search your own history uh, if you are looking for a particular website that you visited. You can also do a keyword search, but sometimes the keyword search doesn't work very well for me. You need to clear the history. Here's also where you clear the history. To get out of the top sites, you just press the top sites button. Oh, maybe the back there. You press the back button and that'll take you back. All right, the last feature I would like to show you in Safari, which is actually the coolest and it's the most recent, is the reading list. So sometimes you find an article and you just don't have time to read it. Maybe you're sitting in class like me and a little bit bored sometimes and uh, you're just kind of perusing a news website and you find a really great article but you don't really have the attention that you want to give it. So you want to save this article for later. Are you going to add it to your bookmarks? No, probably not. So you can actually just add a bookmark into your reading list. So the reading list looks like a pair of glasses. If you press the button, there's my reading list. These are websites that I want to read. And you can either press the bookmark button to add this page to the reading list, or you can press the add page. I'm gonna press add page, and it automatically takes whatever page my browser is currently on and puts it right there on the uh, reading list. If you wanna add it through a bookmark, you just press the plus button, and instead of top sites, pick reading, press the add button, and it just, there it is again. So we just added it again.
when you are done reading these articles, if you just hover over them, you can see the little X right there. That'll delete it off your reading list. I really, really like this feature. It's extremely useful when uh, you're reading an article and you don't really want to lose the flow of the article, but the author has put in a lot of links and you do want to check out those links, but you don't want to lose the flow of the article. This way you can save them all on the reading list and uh, this reading list best feature of all is actually updated across all of your Macs and all of your iOS devices. You don't, um, you don't need to transfer these like bookmarks. They're automatically updated. Um, I think I'll show you one final feature of Safari. This is another one I particularly like. This is the tabs button. If you don't have tabs enabled, this is the best way to view content. Instead of having several different uh, website or several different web browsers open at the same time, or even just multiple windows of Safari, use tabs. If you don't have the tab button, let me go back for a sec. If you don't have the tab button, right click on the uh, on the toolbar, go to customize toolbar, and the tab button is. Where is it? There it is, new tab. Just drag it to your bar like I have done. I love that button. All right, so when you press the new tab button, you're gonna get a brand new window like this. And then you can search something without losing your other page. So I still have that science fair projects open on the left-hand tab right there. Now I'm going to the Globe Mail. Both windows are open. Let's say you are looking at this uh, the science website here and you see a link that you really want to open but you don't want to leave the main page you right click the main page go to open new tab and it's going to open it open that link in a new tab instead of opening a whole new window I much prefer this way of, uh, of uh, browsing the internet instead of having a whole bunch of open Safari windows or a bunch of different browsers open at the same time you can flip back and forth between your content if you don't like the order you can drag tabs one place or another. If you want to save all the tabs as bookmarks, you can do that as well. So bookmarks for these tabs. It's not letting me do that because I already have these tabs bookmarked. And uh, oh, the final feature, if you're using OS X Lion, um, all these tabs that I have open right now, if I were to close my internet browser, let me do that and I'll show you. If I were to close my internet browser, so Safari is now closed, you can see the uh, uh, the icon it no longer has the blue dot underneath. Now I'm going to open up Safari again, and it should automatically reload all my tabs. Yep, there they are. So all the all three of my tabs are going to come right back up. And I love that feature of Line. That feature also works if you restart the computer or shut down the computer. It will automatically reload all of your uh, tabs. All right, so uh, this has been a video tutorial from edmats.ca. Again, my name is Tyler Osborne, and I uh, hope you learned something about Safari. Thanks for watching.